This is Linda Sherman, at Linda Sherman. I'm here with Chameleon, at Chameleon Air. Thank you so much for talking to us today. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. You know, I've been visiting a lot of conferences, meeting a lot of interesting, innovative, smart people, and it's real cool, you know? Great. I've been asking everybody today to give a 140 character introduction of themselves. I wonder if you can try that. Okay, um, starting now. Yes. <laughs> Um, chameleon Air, a Grammy Award winning, platinum artist, businessman, entrepreneur, motivator. Fabulous. That's terrific. One of the things that you said today in your panel really struck me because I'm a woman and you, you talked about how great it was that there were a number of women at this conference and, and not just eye, eye candy. candy. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder if you could talk about that a bit. Um, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. I kind of noticed that that it was a lot of women in the crowd, and um, I've been to a lot of tech conferences, and a lot of times it's dominated by males, you know what I mean? And, you know, of course you, you see women there, but a lot of times they're kind of just more objectified and being like, okay, they're just there to kind of, you know, kind of open the door. And this time I actually saw a lot of women on their computers. They have their businesses, they're handing their cars, they're, you know, have their own ideas, their own businesses, and I'm like, you know, even made the mistake of asking somebody, oh, you're here with him? She's like, no, I don't know him. I'm here for myself. And I was like, oh, okay, my bad. You know, so that kind of was real interesting to me to see that there's a lot of women that are involved and they got their own startups, they've got their own businesses, and some of them weren't even working for nobody. And it kind of just shows you where you know we're going as a society to where the woman's place is a little bit more, you know, where they can be independent. And, and you know, I think I kind of saw that in this tech conference a little bit more than the other t tech conferences that I visit. You know, terrific. Can you give three things that you would like to give as advice to someone starting off on Twitter? Um, someone starting off on Twitter. Hmm. Well, I would say, <clears throat> excuse me, I would say, um, know your audience. Know what audience that you're trying to, you know, talk to or attack or the reason why you're trying to be on Twitter. You know, you got some people that just get on there from a fan perspective to keep up with other people. You got some people that are trying to market or promote something. And then, you know, you can't make everybody happy. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to follow you and everybody's not going to have the same interest, but you got to know the main audience that you're trying to talk to and you talk to them on a daily basis as much as you can. Try to keep it interesting for them. Um, also, be authentic. You know what I mean? Like, don't do anything that's not you, you know, keep, treat Twitter like it's, it, it's real life, like it's a real person, like there's real people listening, you know what I mean, because you never know who's watching those tweets, you know, there's some people that are on Twitter right now, don't even know their mother's probably looking at everything they're posting, you know what I mean, be authentic to who you are, be authentic to what you really believe, and, you know, just pay attention to the fact that people are, you know, it, it, these are real people, you know, and then also last, you know, just have fun, you know what I mean, like nobody, you know, people like interesting people, you know what I mean, they don't like to see somebody that's just on there always complaining because even in 140 characters, you can influence somebody else's day. You can do something and, you know, post a link to a song that actually makes somebody feel better. Just understand the power you have when you're on Twitter and don't get so caught up in a number of followers. It's more about the quality over the quantity, you know. Fabulous. That's terrific advice. Can you tell us about a shared experience that you've, you've had on Twitter? Hmm, a shared experience I've had on Twitter with my fans. Well, it's kind of crazy because you almost feel in some way that everything you're doing is a shared experience. You know what I mean? Like, like I'll be at this tech conference and I, I'll be kind of, you know, fiending to actually, like, I'll be itching to get my iPhone out right now and just tweet, like, hey, man, I'm getting interviewed by, because you feel like you want to share it with the people that care. And then you'll, you'll get a response back from a lot of people and you'll see what they really care about and what they don't care about. Like, I might want to share my breakfast and not that many people might want to respond, but I might share, you know, hey, man, I'm walking into the VMAs and I'm sitting front row. You know what I mean? Like I went to the BET Awards and I was sitting front row and I was tweeting everything and so many people came to my page because they got to live that experience through me. You know what I mean? And, you know, Jamie Foxx was on the stage and Beyonce performed and all these people and I was so close. I was just taking all the pictures and everybody was like, wow, man, you know, Camillion, we appreciate it. We don't get to walk down the red carpet with you and we got to see everybody through your page and they felt like part of the experience. And then you got some people who would be like, you know what, you're sending too many twit pics, you know what I mean? So <laughs> you can't make everybody happy at the end of the day, but I try to let everybody be involved with most of the experiences. That's a great way of sharing experience, thank yeah. you. You use more than one platform to communicate with your fans. Can, can you talk a little bit about how you use the different platforms differently? 
Um, well, with me, the main one for me is my website, chameleonair.com. That's where my brand is. That's the home base for everything. And I kind of use a little bit of everything to kind of draw people back to that. Like, you know, some people have this argument where they'll be like, oh, well, Twitter's not paying me. I'm not getting on that. Or, you know, these people don't pay me. But you got to understand where people exist. You know what I mean? People are existing on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter. You know what I mean? And you can't just alienate yourself from the rest of the population. You go to the rest of the population. You conversate with them. And then you, you bring them back to your world. You know what I mean? And I bring them back to my site. I do, you know, content on my site and sometimes I'll do like a caption this contest where I'll be like you know what the best caption on this picture will receive a free autograph CD by me and all the fans it'll be like 3,000 comments and they'll all be trying to win and they'll be very active on my site but also it's keeping the data their email addresses and everything and I can continue to stay in contact with them even when my Twitter page crashes or you know it's very important to keep them in line with what you're doing and I, I try to draw them back to the brand you know Fabulous. I really appreciate your time and it was wonderful getting to talk to you today, Chameleon. Thank you. Thanks.